The future is bright and very exciting when it comes to continuous glucose monitors, from ones that can track your breath, others that can track multiple analytes like ketones and even heart rate, to non-invasive monitors that track brain waves using EEG, and even implantables that measure the blood. Welcome to the show, I'm Justin, I have type 1 diabetes, and on this channel, I talk all things diabetes tech news and research. I've got videos like this on Fridays and a podcast every Monday where I speak to experts in the field, CEOs. CEOs at companies or industry leaders. Today we're talking all future continuous glucose monitors. I'm not talking about later this year, early next year. I'm talking about the next level of continuous glucose monitors. And I see a world where devices like this one that I'm wearing become a novelty and that this next generation of implantables or even brainwave technology is kind of that mainstream technology that people are using. We shall see, let's get into this step. Let's start in the interesting space of implantables. The first one is GlucoTrack. GlucoTrack has a device that doesn't test interstitial fluid like the sensors we're using today, but instead it's a CBGM, a continuous blood glucose monitor because it's testing the blood. It's an implantable device and it's designed for long-term use up to three years. And GlucoTrack says that it would be more accurate at reading because it's unlike getting interstitial fluid, which lags about 10 minutes behind, this could be in the moment readings. Here's how it would work. The device would get implanted about five centimeters into the subclavian vein through a minimally invasive outpatient procedure. The surgery would take around 20 minutes under local anesthesia, and it would leave a scar of about one and a half centimeters. Once in place, GlucoTrack uses electrochemical sensor technology to continuously measure glucose in the blood. I actually got to see the sensor in person. It's about half the size of a USB drive that contains like the batteries and the brains, and then there is a long lead that comes off of it. The device weighs about six and a half grams, and it would go in the chest area. I did ask GlucoTrack in person, are you gonna be able to see this you know, through the skin? And they said that in its current form, you may actually see it. Now, I don't know if that's something I would want, what about you? If it meant wearing a more accurate continuous glucose monitor that was there for three years, do you want something that's visually like coming out of your chest? Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments. GlucoTrack has already completed their first in-human study in Brazil with 10 participants that had type one and type two. It showed that the implant was safe and that it functioned continuously for several days. And the early accuracy results were pretty good. They were 7.7% .7 marred, which is, below the current sensors that we have now, just below. I would like to see if that could get a little more accurate because for something so invasive, uh, I'd want it to be like significantly better. There are more studies ahead. They have a 30 participant study going in Australia. We could see a pivotal trial in 2026 and potential commercial launch around 2028 if all goes well. Now, this other implantable, the Eversense, you may know it. Currently, they've got the Eversense 365. It's an implantable CGM that's out now. You have to wear an external device to get readings. But Eversense has a couple projects that are going on right now to make it so that there is no external device. It's only implantable. The first one is Project Gemini. It's a self-powered implantable sensor with an internal battery that can be scanned or swiped by a phone, and it will retroactively get the last eight hours of glucose data without the need of a transmitter. That's probably not for people who are type two using an insulin pump because you can't automate insulin if you're having to scan all the time. But there is another project. The Freedom product would integrate Bluetooth inside the sensor to send glucose readings every five minutes to a smartphone or an insulin pump. But I did have Eversense come on the podcast, so you can learn a lot more about it in that episode. I'll throw that in the show notes. The future will also be full of sensors that are not measuring just glucose, but multiple analytes. Specifically, Abbott, they make the Libre 3 Plus. They're working on a dual glucose ketone sensor. Now, ketones could be good to track because they could prevent DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis if there's a buildup of, of ketones. Uh, how important is ketone measuring to you? Let me know in the comments. Personally, I have never measured my ketones in the four years of me having diabetes. Dexcom is said to also be working on a ketone glucose monitor. No word on that yet. They haven't officially said that, but I have heard about that. And there are a bunch of other companies working on multi-analyte sensors. But before we get into those, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Snack. I've been using Snack to log carb counts for meals and see how different foods affect my glucose. You need to know about this app. 
With Snack, you can log meals a few different ways, by snapping a picture, scanning a barcode, or from a custom library of saved meals and foods. After connecting your CGM and insulin pump, you'll have your glucose and insulin doses right alongside your meal entries. This is when the app clicked for me. With those connected, I could not only see what I was eating, but how these foods affected my glucose. Check out this salad I ate. I snapped an image and Snack automatically categorized and calculated what it consisted of. And it also showed me the carb counts and portion size. At the bottom, you can see the glucose graph from before I ate, when I bolused, and how the food affected my levels over time. From the insights tab, I can go even deeper to see the calorie intake, fat, protein, and carb contents of the food I'm eating over time. With all this data, I learn more about how foods and insulin affect me, and I can discuss those insights with my healthcare team. You can try out Snack yourself with a free seven day trial. Use that link in the show notes to download the app on the Android or Apple App Store and start your seven day free trial today. There is a new class of CGM emerging, and these wouldn't require a needle. They're needle-free CGMs, and they're also designed to measure multiple analytes, not just glucose. The first one is BioLink Shine. This sensor is designed for people with type 2 diabetes, not on insulin. And this one has an LED light to signify glucose levels. So it's worn on the forearm, no needles are used. It's micro sensor array, sits just beneath the skin, 20% more shallow than traditional CGMs. So the device just got FDA de novo classification in October, 2025. De novo classification is reserved for novel medical devices with no existing equivalent. It allows the FDA to classify innovative products based on their actual risk profile rather than defaulting to the highest risk category. This could open the door for wider use of simple needle-free glucose monitoring, which we'll get into. So this sensor could measure ketones, lactate, activity, and sleep. So it does a bunch of things. And that light is really interesting. It would be blue if you're at a certain range or yellow at another range. So not only will you be wearing your heart on your sleeve, or that's at least what I do, but you'll be wearing your glucose on your sleeve or your forearm. But seriously, what do you think of this? Would you wear a CGM on your arm that lights up the the color of your glucose. Like I already feel judged when I look at my watch and someone's like, your glu- how are your glucose? Like them being able to see it, unless you set a rule of like, do not say anything when you see this, like it's for me. But also like, how often do you really want to be looking at your arm? I don't know if I need the light, maybe a little gimmicky in my mind, but it's also like a really cool mood ring. Let me know what you think in the comments. Next up, there's Sava. So Sava's wearable uses a proprietary microsensing technology with a micro sensor that sits just beneath the skin. So similar to BioLink, the sensor can measure glucose in real time and potentially other molecules, they say, like cortisol, lactate, or ketones. Another company, Trinity Biotech, is working on what they call the CGM Plus. It uses their own proprietary needle-free technology that can track heart signals, sleep, movement, and temperature alongside glucose. And then we've got one more. Maybe maybe there's others I'm missing, but this is the One Health Biosensor. It's actually coming from the same people who brought you the One Drop blood glucose meter. So this uses its own micro needle sensing platform and it's aimed for people with type two diabetes. So a lot going on there. Let me know what you think of this whole space down in the comments. I mean, we kind of are becoming cyborgs, right? This is the next step. Now this next one blew my mind. No, literally, because it's Sync Neuro developing a wearable that tracks brain waves to monitor glucose and other biometrics. They are developing the world's first non-invasive brain signal-based glucose monitor. It uses EEG signals to track and predict blood sugar in real time. So the idea builds on research showing that when glucose levels shift, the brain's hypothalamus and connected regions emit distinctive electrical patterns. Now, SyncNeuro's device detects EEG signals from the skin's surface and uses algorithms to translate them into glucose trends. The wearable sits right behind the ear. It's a soft, flexible patch that gets placed there with an adhesive. That data would sync with an app. People can check on how their glucose has been alongside other things like the food they've been eating, exercise, and rest. I had NeuroSync on my show. I had the CEO, and he said that they're not quite sure yet if they'll be showing a number or just trend graphs. This wouldn't be for people who have type one, it would be for people who have prediabetes to prevent them from moving to type two or people with type two. That was a fascinating 
fascinating interview. You'll have to check that out. I'll put it in the show notes. We've also heard about non-invasive glucose monitors coming from Apple and Samsung for their wearables. So Apple has been working on this for nearly 15 years, reports say. It is their moonshot project, and it would seemingly be implemented in their line of watches, which already track heart rate, ECG, and irregular rhythms in the heart, uh, and blood oxygen. And they work closely with the FDA already. But apparently, the device that they have right now is about the size of an iPhone, and I believe there's like overheating issues. So they're not quite there uh, with this device. So the way the technology would work is it would use lasers to transmit specific wavelengths of light through the skin to measure glucose in the interstitial fluid without piercing the skin. Now, very cool, it's non-invasive. It is testing interstitial fluid, so it's not really advancing in the more timely readings than the current ones we're wearing. Now, Samsung is also working on this. Reports say that they've been working on it for at least five years. Their executive, Han Pak, says that Samsung is deeply invested in blood glucose monitoring technology. This technology could arrive on their Samsung Galaxy watches or even their Ring. But ultimately, even if this technology does come out to Samsung and Apple watches, it's very possible that it's not for people who are automating insulin and may never be for people who are automating insulin. It may just be for the everyday person, which is kind of where I see this industry going. While we need to address the access issue now, it also means that if these are becoming so normalized that the technology that we're getting at that time would be even more advanced. Another direction non-invasive is going is with your breath. So you know how when people with diabetes have a high glucose, Typically, their breath smells sweet, right? There is a reaction going on there. Well, this device called the Isaac is being developed by Prevent, and it's designed to analyze breath and send glucose levels to an app. It's analyzing acetone, a specific volatile organic compound in exhaled breath. Isaac was introduced at CES 2025. It's currently undergoing continued development and FDA review. It's not yet available, but I'm very eager to hear what happens with this. Prevent says the device could be worn at night to alert individuals of their blood sugar drops. I'm guessing if that's, you know, wearing some sort of necklace, but you are going to need, like, where is it going to go? If it's on my neck, is it actually going to gather it? Does it need to, like, go around my mouth? I'm still not entirely sure, like, how this would be worn. They also say that one day it could be worn by people who are automating insulin. Again, I don't know how feasible that is unless you're wearing like a little, like one of those old little headphones where you, you talk, um, or I guess gamers still use it, uh, and you're, you're, using, you're wearing that all day. I don't think I'm gonna do that though. Now, I wanna hear from you. Which devices in this video do you think are the most realistic? And I also wanna hear which ones do you wanna use the most? Like, which ones would make your quality of life even better? Are you using an insulin pump? Are you even using insulin? Let me know down in the comments, especially if you're type one or type two, because that really does affect which one would work best for you. Also, I want to hear, which ones do you think will fail? Like, out of all of these, which ones are you like, that? sorry, that is not going to happen. I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. Uh, also, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter on diabetic.info. And on that website, we drop, like, the latest news every day and we don't always have time to make a video about it on social or here on the YouTube channel, but everything like the, the latest news is always on that website. We also just had our first live event on diabetes tech where insulin pumps and CGMs that we have today, where they're going, like all of the new innovations that are coming out of that industry. Uh, it was our first live event. It's to watch that full recording. It's on diabetic.info. You need to be an all access member. That's our premium subscription. With that, you gain access to our monthly live events, exclusive stories and industry analysis. So head over to diabetic.info slash all access to sign up for that. Thank you for watching. I'm Justin and I'll tech you later.